Hello everyone, today's video is going to be covering something that I find myself doing on a fairly frequent basis uh, because of the nature of creating YouTube content. Uh, when I'm, you know, brainstorming the idea for a video title, I kind of want to keep it below 50 characters so that I can make sure it looks right on like a mobile device. And for that, I usually end up going to Google, typing some combination of character counter or char counter and hoping I find the right tool for the job. So today I thought I'd do this little tutorial. So I just have a project I can spin up every time whenever I want to do this real quick. It's such a weirdly simple use case, uh, but it's something where like, you know, it's always going out of the way to do it. I figure if I'm already in my terminal, I might as well just run something, right? So for this, what we're going to be doing is whenever you edit a post or whatever on your website, you have the ability to hook up one of these little char counters to the area. It uses just a little bit of stimulus to update this in real time. So it's pretty simple, uh, but of course it's good UX to have something like this. Maybe if you have like a set number of characters, you have a validator on the back end where you want to have like less than, I don't know, 500 characters. Maybe you want it to update in real time so the user can see how they're doing relative to that character cap, right? Or maybe you just want to like have the word count for the kids that are doing an essay uh, and you know that they're going to paste it into Word anyways. So you might as well make their life a little bit easier while they try to do the bare minimum of effort. So to do this, we're going to come out here. We're going to do a uh, Rails new video with a dash J of ES build and a dash C of bootstrap, just like that. And thankfully, in my case, I already have a video project. So I'm just going to CD into it and run a code dot. And then we can go ahead and get started from there. Now, the two gems that I'm going to add here, one's going to be uh, a simple form gem, and that's mostly just for the sake of styling. The other one is going to be Foreman. So we're going to go ahead and run a bundle command to install this real quick. Uh, this will actually fail as soon as I CD out of here. So thankfully I'm not doing this as a permanent project, uh, but even CDing out of this directory, it'll cause this to completely break. But okay, now that we have that, we're going to do a rails g simple underscore form colon install. And then we'll do a space dash dash bootstrap. It'll just install the bootstrap CSS for us, which makes everything look a little bit prettier. Then we can just do a Rails G scaffold for, I don't know, you can do like a post. Give each post a title and a body of type text, something like that. Just something very simple. Go ahead and run that. We can then do a Rails DB colon migrate command if we're so inclined. And then we can do a bin slash dev to go ahead and start the server to uh, hopefully have something appear when we go to localhost port 3000. There we go. So we can go ahead and close the gem file, come over here and go into config and routes.rb. In the routes, we just want to set the root to be the post controller and the index action, which is that page where we see all of those posts, just so we don't have to go to slash posts to get here. And that looks good. Now let's come over to our app, our views, our layouts, and our application.html.erb. Because we're using Bootstrap, we're going to do a dot container dot mt dash five, which will just cause stuff to be centered more towards the middle of the page and off of the sides and the top. So it looks a little bit cleaner. We can click new post and this is the form we're going to be styling. So essentially what we need to do here is run a little yarn command. So we're going to go ahead and stop the server because we're using uh, ES build. We can use yarn here. If you're using import maps, it'll be a very similar command and I'll walk you through that. We're going to go ahead and paste this in. We're going to run a yarn add stimulus dash character dash counter. This is coming from the stimulus components website again. So if you've never been, I'll have a link to it in the video description. Feel free to support them because they do uh, continue to make content based on donations. So it's always nice to actually support those, uh, those projects. We'll go ahead and we'll run this. Now that we have that, what we can do, uh, well, I guess if you're running like a uh, import maps, you want to do a bin slash import map pin and then your stimulus dash character dash counter. And that should work just as well if you're just using a basic Rails 7 setup. Now we can do a bin slash dev and start the server again. Come over to localhost port 3000 slash post slash new. It'll work just fine. Now we're going to have to import the stimulus controller that came with that, which we can do by coming over to app JavaScript controllers. And you can either put this in, I mean, pretty much anywhere. I'm going to put mine in the index here. We're just going to import this below the hello controller and then below the hello controllers register. Uh, this comes with the Rails project. We're just going to register this character counter controller. And again, this will work just like any other stimulus. So now that we have this, we can come over here to our posts and our form because we want to put this in the form specifically. And then in the form, what we want to do 
is uh, just sort of bind this controller, which is pretty simple to do. We need to start by just having a div for the uh, stimulus controller to bind it. So we can just do a data dash controller equals character dash counter. It'll work just fine. Go ahead and close this. So just doing this alone won't really change anything. Uh, the, the other thing we do need to do is we need to add some data to the, uh, the field that we want to have the counter on. So we want to make sure that the div dash controller is surrounding whatever we want the counter to be affected by. So if we also wanted like the title to have a counter, we would then have to wrap the controller around the title. And then to specifically give this the target, we give it a comma data colon. And then inside of some braces, we say this is a target for the uh, character counter. So we do character underscore counter underscore target. This character counter is the name of the controller underscore target just means you can access it as a target inside of that controller. Think of this as like a document dot get element by ID. Then we just name it input. And then that gives us access to this input inside of this controller. So we can go ahead and we can save that. We can refresh and you'll see that we don't have that counter yet. And the reason is we have the input, but we, we haven't told it where to put the text that says you have this many characters, right? So to do that, we can come uh, below the F input if we want to right here. We can just put a div or uh, it's suggesting a text right right here. Uh, it really doesn't matter what you want to do. Uh, and then uh, the span right here and then it closes this off, I guess. Now this is GitHub Copilot generating this. We can go ahead and refresh and you'll see this isn't working because Copilot's not always 100% accurate with what it wants to do. So what we'll do instead is we will do a p tag in here. We'll just say um, uh, there are and then we can just do a strong and then this is where we need to bind this to that controller again. So we'll say data dash uh, data dash character dash counter dash target equals counter. So this is our strong uh, text that will be inserted with the counter itself. So we don't actually need to put anything in here, uh, but we do need to finish the sentence. So we're gonna say there are this many and then whatever we wanna finish off with. So we'll say uh, characters or something, right? We can go ahead and we can save that just so that it's a bit more clear what is actually being counted here. You can refresh and now you'll see there are blank characters. So if we put like a zero in here to start off with, can see there are zero characters. Now, if we refresh, we can see this still isn't quite working. And the reason why is a little bit of a quirk that has to do with using simple form for this. In the original demo, I was using a basic form, which is why it was just working out of the box. But here, this isn't actually binding this data to the F dot input. So if we hit control shift I, we'll see this error that says missing element inputs. We know the inputs the issue. If we hover over this and we click on it, we'll be able to see that this doesn't actually have that data on the text area. So what we want to do is uh, after the body, we want to do a comma or we just say something like uh, as text. And then instead of having the data here like this, what we want to do is just hit control X to cut this. We want to declare that this is specifically for the input HTML, which then goes inside of some braces. And then inside of those braces, we can tell it to have some data. So it's going to be a double brace situation here, which is a little bit ugly, uh, but it's an unfortunate consequence. And now if we refresh, we should see that this counter works as expected because now we're specifically telling it to affect the input HTML and apply whatever's in here to this. So this is also how you would like style your text area input specifically if you're using simple form. Uh, it's a pretty common thing that people run into when they're trying to get this to work. Uh, it won't work out of the box and then you end up doing a bunch of Googling before you run into like the input HTML being the issue. This works with other Rails forms as well where you want to specifically target the, the input and not the like label or the outer div that surrounds both of those. Because you can see right here, there's a div that surrounds both of these. If I just uh, zoom in a bit, it's this div with a class of MB-3 text optional and then post body. So you can see this post body right here is actually a wrapper div around both the label and the text area, similar to what the like default uh, Rails form looks like. So if I just come up here and I just do like the regular form helper, it looks something like this, where it has the a div around it with a form.label and a form.text field. 
you have the label right here, the text uh, text area, I guess, uh, and then the wrapper div, which is this div. So you're kind of getting this entire thing when you do the f.input. So it's just a little bit extra there uh, because we're using simple form here, but it does make it look a little bit nicer just out of the box with uh, you know bootstrap and stuff. So now we can say test case and words go here. Uh, and then we can see that's 13 characters. Or in my case, I might say something like um, uh, adding text uh, or like a uh, text uh, counters, text character counters for a Ruby on Rails 7 app. I can see that's 49 characters. So I know when I resize this uh, YouTube video uh, to a mobile device, it'll still read just fine. So people can still find this tutorial. But yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about. It's uh, again, it comes from a stimulus components page largely, uh, but they don't use simple form. So in this case, it's a little bit different how we're doing this, uh, but the core concepts are still here. And they also show you at the bottom how you can uh, override the controller if you'd like. It's pretty simple. We've covered that on the channel before. So I'll just leave that uh, as an exercise for the viewer. And again, I would invite you to sponsor the stimulus components website if this is something you get value out of. Uh, because they are going to be more likely to add additional features you if they see that they are getting that backing and that support, right? Like open source projects do uh, unfortunately rely on the support of the people using those projects to continue development. So yeah, uh, I'll have a link to this, this website in the video description. If you're interested, they have a whole bunch of other uh, examples on the side panel that I think would be interesting. That's going to do it for me. Hopefully you found this interesting. Hopefully you found this helpful and hopefully I will see you in the next tutorial.